Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today at Star Plaza at Playhouse Square, and we're here with Fred Franks. He's the Director of Managed IT Services for Fit Technologies. Welcome, Fred. Thanks for meeting with us today. Thank you. Your offices are right over your shoulder here uh, in the Idea Center building, um, and you guys handle a lot of really interesting technology. One of the areas that I found fascinating was uh, I've heard about a LAN, a local area network. I've heard about a WAN, which is a wide area network. But what's a SAN exactly, a S-A-N? Sure, that's a storage area network. Okay. And it's, it's basically a network, or really it's more of an appliance. It's an array of hard drives, and it's used for storing large files. It's used for many purposes, but it's basically a lot of hard drives that are clustered together for the purpose of storage, and it's very fast. Okay. So, um, for example, why would a company uh, want to use a SAN, a storage area network? Sure, there's a few reasons. One would be uh, to store large files to for backup purposes. So say you have all these servers and you want to do backups and you want to do them quickly. Now, some people just back up directly to tape drives and actually the preferred method is to back up to hard drives and offload that to tape. So having a nice SAN where you can back up everything to very quickly gets that whole backup process over with so the servers can continue to do what they're doing and not be strained by backing up. Okay. So that disk to disk uh, is a lot faster than disk to tape. Uh, that's that's the primary purpose for a SAN uh, for most customers that we for use. For backup purposes. For backup purposes. Right, right. There's a couple other ones. Uh, another one is for storing large files uh, actually as production data. So you can have a server uh, or, or many servers, and instead of having internal hard drives, they're actually using the SAN fiber uh, connecting to this the SAN where it has high read, write, and availability. So you have redundancy in the hard drives, more redundancy because you have uh, racks of, of hard drives, and they're a lot faster because you're writing to multiple disks and they're, and they're mirrored in stripes, so it's actually sending the data so much more quickly. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, is this for people that have either like really large files, like you, you think about audio visual stuff, video, right? They're very large files. Uh, or people that have, what, massive quantities of files that they need to back up yes, quickly? Yes, it's, it's, it's both of them. It could be the very large files, the media and the video editing, if you will, those large files that have lots of reads and writes. It could also be customers that have uh, just large amounts of files. They have lots of data that they're storing. Or it could be somebody that's running, uh, say, like an e-commerce or, or somebody that has a, uh, a database like SQL. And you're going to have lots of reads and lots of transactions, so a high transactional database, uh, which could be a result of lots of files. Right. And a high transaction database is going to want that type of availability for those quick reads and quick right. writes. What, what has the cost, what's happened with the cost on, on some of these storage area networks? Because, you know, we hear about uh, costs going down uh, for hard drive disk space. Is that, is that, have you found that uh, true? Yes, absolutely. The hard drives have come down tremendously in price. And the SANs are not cheap. They're no longer in that uh, that six-figure uh, mark that they uh, used to okay. be. So customers are, the medium and small business customers are more able to afford those, uh, those hard drives and those uh, storage area networks where they couldn't use to. And there's also uh, very cost-effective alternatives to the premier uh, types of drives. They're, they're actually alternative drive sets that can go in that are much more uh, cost effective but still provide that high availability and high speed uh, at a lower cost. Right. Talk about some of your clients and what kind of applications they use uh, some of these storage area networks for. I mean, sure. is this for small uh, businesses? Is it for large businesses only? I mean, who would actually use it? Well, uh, Lots of businesses use it. The, obviously, the, the large customers or are, are large businesses are always using it. But the medium and small businesses are moving more into the SANs. And there's a real big moving point for that. And uh, as we're an EMC reseller, another part of EMC's product set is virtualization we talked about, VMware. And VMware uses a SAN in a very interesting way. It allows you to store your server on the SAN, uh, your virtual server on the SAN, and so that if a physical server actually were to go down, that another physical server that's running virtualization can pick it up right off the SAN. So that's not something you could do unless you have the SAN in place. So a SAN provides, uh, when coupled with virtualization, provides you with that high availability of your server environment as well, not just your storage environment. Right. Is this important for people with like e-commerce uh, applications and large website applications? Absolutely, because a lot of the servers, uh, whether they're clustered or it's a single standalone server, that back-end piece, that SQL back-end piece that's not a part of the web front-end, right. that's doing all that transaction, all the calculations, it really needs that disk, the high read and high writes and the outputs from a hard drive that you're not going to get with a, you know four or five hard drives sitting on a server. You're going to have uh, eight or more sitting on the SAN where they're reading and writing all in unison and, and pushing that data out much faster. Is this something that where where these servers have to sit physically uh, by your main server farm or on location or 
Is it possible to have these uh, somewhere else on the internet connected through broadband, or how, how does that work? Well, that's an interesting question. There's a lot more capabilities now where you could do, there's, there's the two types of uh, SAN drives. There's the very high speed, more expensive fiber channel, and there's the cheaper alternatives. And the fiber channel, as well as the cheaper alternatives, can now go over IP. That's the same as when you're sending an email that's going over IP. When you have voice over IP, that's all over IP. It's right. basically sending it over Ethernet. So you're able to send it over uh, distances where you don't have to have it locally. You're going to have some advantages both cost-wise and speed-wise having them locally, but you're not going to be suffering by having it somewhere across town if you're doing fiber channel or over IP or any other, th any other type of protocol over IP. Right. At what point does it actually become a, 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 a storage area network? I mean, it, if you have two or three hard drives, I mean, it's, it's more complicated than that, isn't it? I mean, you, yeah. you really, you have RAID array software that, that, that syncs all this up, or how does that work? Right. We work very closely, as I mentioned before, with EMC, and there's other vendors out there that we, we work with. But uh, basically, you have a controller, and that head unit's like a server. And within that controller, you plug in shelves in, in the back of that controller. And you also have a switch, but it's different than your data switch. So you have a lot of components that you have of, of a normal network. You have a switch for the fabric, for the, for the fiber, and you have a controller, which is like a server. And inside those shelves are just empty slots that you plug in the hard drives. So uh, without oversimplifying it, you basically are adding shelves as you grow, and certain controllers can take more shelves. Right. And that software all resides on that controller, and it, it tells uh, the hard drives how to behave, what they're getting, what's getting the reads and what's getting the writes, and, and how they're replicating the data. Right. Well, it sounds pretty cool, and it sounds like Fit Technology is right up to speed on all this new technology. Thanks for taking time with us, Fred. Thank you. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland. Elves. And, and